today to go over digital marketing and try to dispel some of the myths and help you understand a little better what this whole thing is all about. So the whole purpose of this presentation is to help you navigate through the digital world and that's everything from getting found on Google and getting the most out of your overall digital marketing and your digital footprint online. Whether you have an, an established presence online or not, there are several low hanging fruit pieces here that a lot of business owners are missing out on and I'm here to help you save time and money and energy when it comes to growing your business. So your best marketing tool is clearly your internet presence. That could be your website, that could be a little mobile site, it could be a lot of things. But customers are looking for us. Customers are already empowered with digital tools, whether that's their cell phone, that's their that's their their tablet or their laptop or their computer, it doesn't matter. Customers have all the tools in front of them to find you. And Bill Gates said it really well uh, not too long ago. said, you know, we're, we are surrounded by the internet. That means access to your business 24-7. Look, over 70 million iPhones have been sold to date. One million iPhones per week are going off the shelves every time Apple comes out with a new iPhone. And that's not even counting what people are doing with these iPads and all the tablets coming out. The thing is, people are so connected and they can make quick decisions, quick searches, and research you at will. If you look at the trends, it's clear that customers are pre-shopping on the internet. There's no doubt about it. If you look at Facebook, there are 500 million plus users and these business pages that businesses can put up there are getting ranked on Google. They're even beating Google in a lot of places. And that's why Google recently introduced Google Plus. Over 15 million users have registered in Google Plus in the first few short weeks in its launch. Look, this, this spells an enormous opportunity for you. Most websites out there are designed to look good. Most most folks out there have this pretty little website that they had some designer, maybe even a family member build for them. That's great. That's fine. But the problem is findability is usually an afterthought. The, the most important thing you need to realize here is your website is really a tool. It's a sales tool. And if it's just made to look pretty and it's not being presented in front of your customers when they're looking for you, that's not doing you any service. But the good news is that you are in a unique opportunity to outshine your competitors. And one of these tools that we like to talk about is SEO. That stands for Search Engine Optimization. Now this is just one tool out of many tools in your dig digital marketing arsenal that you can be using. So let's talk about SEO. It's really simple. You already know what it is. Whether or not you know, realize that, Look, let's just look at a search here. You see that first arrow up there is the search box. That's where you would type in something like Home Health Care Dallas. Okay? And that second arrow there on the left hand side, that would show a result and that as what we would call an AdWords result or a paid result. Now the third arrow on the right hand side pointing to that other area, those are what we call organic results, natural results. So that third arrow there on the right hand side pointing to that result, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about SEO or search engine optimization. We're talking about showing up on Google or any search engine in the natural results. The fact is the natural results have a four times higher likelihood of getting a click than the paid ads on the top or the right hand side. That's why I guess we're all trained very well to ignore ads these days. We are barraged by them and bombarded by them. So let's talk about search engine usage. Now, as you can see very clearly the 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 500 pound gorilla in the market is Google with well over half of the presence, half of the usage on Google. And it has even more than the other three combined. It's very significant. Uh, so as you can see, we talk a lot about Google when we're talking about search engines and getting found. That's not to say the others are irrelevant. It's just to say that as of now, Google is the king of the market. Okay. So one of the things that's really important in talking about search engine optimization and being findable is keywords. It's all about having a sound keyword strategy. 
and it's really putting yourself in the consumer's shoes just long enough to realize what it is they may be searching to find you and that could be as simple as just understanding the solutions that they are trying to find um, the easiest way to think of keywords is this alright let's say you are a plumber okay let's say we're talking about a plumbing business here they may or may not search plumbers in your city you know let's say you're a plumber in San Diego they may or may not search plumber San Diego or plumbing San Diego that probably would be a valid search term but you also want to consider they might be searching uh, pipe burst San Diego or my pipe just burst I mean there are a lot of different <laughs> variations they might search to find you or they may have a clogged drain clogged drain San Diego or something like that fix my clogged drain so you need to put yourself in their shoes and understand that when somebody comes online to search something like your business that would that would bring up your business odds are they have some sort of problem or pain they are trying to relieve some try, type of problem they're looking for a solution for if you understand what problems or issues your customers or clients may have when they're looking for you you are ahead of the pack by being present where they are searching so I want to kind of discuss now how these keywords are implemented into your website basically we want to just understand that the first words are the most important in Google's eyes so that's where what Google sees first in your site is what's considered most important and that's how you need to place the keywords and I'm not gonna get over over geeky on you here uh, but I'll just I'm gonna explain to you what title meta tag is because that is the first thing Google sees so we'll get into that in just a moment now when you're when you're working with your professional on on your optimization you want to focus on three keywords really three keywords for that front page that's really where uh, that's really where you can maximize your opportunities and it's all about keeping it simple you know there's there's really for most local businesses anyway there's no need to go after thousands of keywords you can just find the three that are gonna bring in quality qualified leads and I, I'll say this because a lot of people think that they want their phone ringing off the hook but that's not true they want their phone ringing with qualified customers customers that already have a credit card in their hand or cash in their hand ready to pay you you don't want to be bombarded all day by tire kickers who aren't serious and are wasting your time I know that's not how most business owners want to do it and I'm sure you're the same so getting back to keywords we're gonna talk about the title tag and how you can actually put the keyword in there and have a decent optimization strategy to help you increase your odds of showing up where it's important and like I said the first words are most important and then there's another thing here about keywords in your web address you know that can that can work for you but you know what it's not the end-all be-all game you can still optimize your site with your business name or anything else and let me just go ahead and I can I can illustrate this a little further by explaining what the title meta tag is you can see the very first arrow here that says title meta tag headline look that under there where it says Jack surfboards skate and surf shop with Nike 6.0 etc etc that is the title meta tag that is the first thing Google sees when it grabs your site and puts it in its big huge file cabinet in the sky like I like to call it uh, and then the second thing underneath that is the description meta tag and I like to kind of call these look you know the title tag is your headline and the description meta tag is your call to action so there's two things going on here one you want to be findable where it counts where your customers are looking for where your qualified leads can funnel through and that's where you have that 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 keyword in there but it's also a headline an attention grabbing headline because the second thing going on here is not just being findable by Google you are competing with the AdWords you're competing with maps sometimes you're competing with videos showing up on the page you're competing with a lot of things so it's not just about Google finding you it's about having a, a pick me pick me attitude you you're trying to get them to pick your link out of the others on on the page so that's important and then the second part is another good place in the description meta tag that's that's that black text you see there uh, where it says jack surfboard surf skate and snow shop free shipping on surf clothes what is the attention grabbing call to action there you're very smart if you said free shipping that is a reason somebody might click click on that it's it's attention grabbing and it will help you now I'll say right now it's it's always good to have keywords in there 
but it needs to be natural and be something that would make somebody want to click that link and come to your site and ultimately pay you money for something. Okay, so let's let's dissect it just a little further just so I can show you a, a blown up view of it. So you can see once again that very top line there, that's the title. And like we said, the first keywords are what you want to focus on. The first words are where you want your, your big keywords. So, you know, I think that they may have missed an opportunity here, and this is this is my opinion uh, in jacksurfboards.com. They may have missed an opportunity uh, to to really maximize their keyword optimization strategy because you know unless they're a well-known brand, odds are people are not as likely to search Jack's surfboards, and that's ultimately what this site is optimized for. And I guarantee most business owners are optimized the same way. It what we what we've called in traditional advertising uh, the vanity ads where your business name came first and it was just all about your business and your brand well the truth is nobody's really searching jack surfboards or as far as I know maybe a few what I am willing to bet is most people are typing surfboards in the city city and that's it so surfboards Huntington Beach California for example in this case so my guess is uh, that would be the better strategy would be in this this uh, title tag to have it say surfboards Huntington Beach and then maybe in the end you could say Jack surfboards or in the t in the in the descriptor you can say Jack surfboards so that's just something to keep in mind of the importance of this strategy okay so pop quiz what is the second biggest search engine in the world I know you showed you that chart and we know that Google's the biggest but what is the second biggest try to think back to the slide and trick question the second biggest search engine in the world is YouTube. Now, YouTube is owned by Google, so I guess that makes Google the super duper mega ninja style search engine out there. Uh, but as you know, it's owned by Google, and overall, it's ranked the number three website in the world. And obviously, it is a search engine unto itself. And the thing is about YouTube is it's becoming a, a go-to search engine, clearly, being the number two in the world. A lot of people search YouTube for, for answers to their questions. You know, if I wanted to try to change the oil in my car, I could go to YouTube and search how to change oil oil in my car or DIY oil change and I guarantee you I'll find many videos that will help me and I can also promise you that if I find resources and things I'm trying to solve that I find useful when I'm ready to go the next step I know businesses that I can contact as a consumer that I trust and the thing is a lot of business owners get really caught up in oh videos are hard it, it, it's gonna cost a lot of money to produce that's not true some of the most popular videos out there on YouTube and the most watched videos on YouTube are all about useful content and they are a very low quality. Viewers expect a real world experience so having gritty video is perfectly okay. It's all about the quality of the content. Obviously if you can do do better quality and you can do better production you have the resources to do that, that's great. That helps your brand better but you know what? The delivery of the content is more important. So I'm going to show you an example here uh, that that we are very familiar with that we have we have consulted with, and this is a uh, this is Austin Center Executive Suites. One of our partners uh, did this uh, site and optimization strategy, and they're allowing us to share this with you today. Uh, so Austin Center Executive Suites is a uh, executive suite in Austin, Texas. They do uh, business rails for entrepreneurs. It's a great company, uh, and what happened here was a simple video was produced on behalf of this company and it was it was put up and then within a, a week or so it showed up in the first spot on the number two search engine in the world on YouTube for the search office space Austin a very competitive keyword in this space just by having this video here this company is placed on top for anybody that's looking for office space and the other beautiful thing is if you look in an organic natural search now they're actually showing up in the top of page one organically just on their own uh, from the good work done on there but just for the video right here out of over as you can see at the top for office space Austin out of over five million results because of that video they're showing up here virtually in the top 15 top 20 out of over five million results online and that's all just from putting together a simple video that wasn't complicated to produce so that's something to think about so let's talk about 
United States online ad spending uh, between 2009 and 2014. Now these these results are the same throughout the world. Uh, this is just we're just showing the U.S. right now, but it's you can look through uh, other nations and it's the trends look identical. You can see from 2009 till 2011, you can see that we're seeing double-digit growth and it's not slowing down anytime soon. Looking towards the future, the fact is more and more businesses are realizing the power of having this direct touch with their customers and, and understanding their customers are more empowered today than ever. So it's very clear in my mind and in clearly in the mind of most businesses out there that this is where the world is today. So let's talk about what a big deal the internet is and I'm sure you probably don't need to hear all this but we're gonna go over it anyway look over 228 million people in the US are connected to the internet and this is referring to people by the way who are connected with a high-speed connection and so that's 74 percent of the US population have access to high-speed internet connection that could be mobile that could be in their home that could be at work but one way or another people are are hooked in and we're not even the leaders in terms of percentage of population South Korea has 77 percent of their population Australia 80 percent Netherlands 86 percent Sweden 89 percent Iceland 93 percent so the world population is connected and what doesn't matter where you are whether you're in the US or somewhere else people are empowered to find you people are empowered and the businesses better get on board with being where the consumer is looking so who's online well, let's look at at some some basic statistics here. Well, we've got a, a clear map here. The 89% of surfers, and this this statistic over here is throughout the world, are between the ages of 15 and 64. And if you look at the kind of generation gaps here, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, you know, the the older folks aren't really online. Not true. Baby boomers are 79%. The mature is 56%. And even the GI generation, that number is 29%. And it's growing. So you can see here, it's not just the young folks. It's all ages are online. All ages are are empowered. So there's no more excuses of, oh, I don't need to be online because people aren't searching there the, the my demographic isn't there that's not true look at look at the trends here okay search engines versus phone books versus newspaper versus TV versus mail <laughs> look at this search engines just blow everybody away this is how customers are getting information to make purchasing decisions and this is not only in the business to consumer space this is exactly the same trend in the B2B space worldwide. Uh, it doesn't matter if somebody's looking to buy a $20 product and getting information or they're looking to get a $100,000 product. Somebody is going online to do the research and they're starting in the search engines. So what you need to make in your mind is this shift, is that customers want to make a purchasing decision. They do not want to be sold to. So let's talk about your business your website your web presence is your website or online presence a billboard in the desert okay I bring this up because it doesn't matter how beautiful it is it doesn't matter how great it is how many tools you have on there how many amazing calls to action you could be the perfect website and do everything right but if it's in the middle of the desert it doesn't matter so you can clearly see where people are making their purchasing decisions is starting on search engines so why aren't you making it a very clear point in your business and an effort to be findable where it counts. Okay, so let's talk a little more about going interactive. And I'm going to bring up two things ROI, which most of us know is return on investment, and another little thing that a lot of entrepreneurs use on a daily basis but don't define, and that's ROE, and that's return on energy. And this is an important thing because, look, Entrepreneurs, business owners, people running business, managing businesses have so many hats to wear and so many things to do. It's not only about putting in some sort of effort or investment to get a return on it. It's also about, hey, how much of my time am I going to spend on this and what am I going to get back from my time? Because at the end of the day, all business owners know there's just not enough time in the day. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. And this is how I bring up Twitter, Facebook, and social media overall. Okay, so I'm going to give you a reality check to start with. First, you are not Zappos, you are not Ashton Kutcher, and you are not an internet social media mogul. Okay, I, I want to say that because 
you know, we see so many case studies in, in popular business magazines all over the place talking about the success of Zappos and Ashton Kutcher, you know, all these people having these tremendous, enormous successes on Twitter or Facebook or, or wherever. The truth is, those aren't relevant. Those aren't relevant to you. Okay, people don't really know who you are, so they don't care. No offense, but they don't care. They don't know who who, who you are because, you know, that's not the way the world works. Unless you are a huge brand or a huge celebrity, and have spent a lot of money on advertising on the Super Bowl, most people probably don't know who you are. But I, I'm not telling you this to tell you that social media is a waste of time. It's absolutely not a waste of time. But the way business owners have been approaching it has been a poor ROI and a poor ROE. And the reason for this is because they've been trying to be Ashton Kutcher. They've been trying to be Zappos. And the truth is, it's useful when you understand the real way business owners can use it. Okay. I want to tell you to start making a shift and stop being so frustrated with social media because I know business owners are very frustrated with social media. It just seems like a waste of time and because the way you're doing it is probably a waste of your time. So the shift I'm going to ask you to make is start thinking about this as a loyalty program, a customer reactivation and retention program. Okay, so remember your current customers already believe in you they've already bought from you they've already spent money on you okay they already they're already true believers if you if you did them right if you they paid for your service you delivered they believe in you so why not just look at this as a way to stay in touch with those customers and the the reason so many people are frustrated so many business owners are frustrated with social media is because they've been using it as a prospecting tool and that's why it's a poor return on your energy and a poor return on your investment because you're not going to land new customers coldly out of the air with social media so I'm going to show you an actual case study that one of our partners worked on and that is this outdoor construction company also in Austin Texas now they have a, a really good web presence and they have a simple Facebook page. They're not even on Twitter. Okay, some some businesses don't need to use Twitter. Some businesses don't need to use Facebook and vice versa. It's it's all up to you. And I'm sure if you're working with a really good digital agency or digital expert, they'll help you understand that and define these goals. But let's get back to the case study here. In this outdoor construction business, they build pergolas, patio covers. Uh, they do all kinds of stuff for pools and all, all kinds of really cool outdoor stuff, outdoor kitchens, everything. And the, the thing about this company is the unique proposition they offer is is something of luxury, something that, that, that homeowners that are getting some sort of really beautiful outdoor kitchen or fire pit built in their backyard, hey, they want to brag about that. So this is how this company went about their social media strategy and loyalty and activation program. Very simple. They do a project, they post it up on their Facebook page, they get the customer involved in it, they say, hey, we're going to take some pictures, we're going to put it on Facebook, they get the customer that they did the job for to be a fan of their Facebook page, and it's that easy. Guess what happens? After they take these pictures, show off the great work they've done, the beautiful new patio cover, the beautiful new outdoor kitchen, their customer turns around and shares that link on their Facebook wall where all their friends can see it. So you can see we're getting into some psychology here. Not only are their customers happy that, you know, hey, they did a great job and I can see it here. I'm proud of it. It's a keeping up with the Joneses psychology and mentality. This company is keeping its existing customers happy and it is driving referrals. So it's not cold calling. It's not just expecting cold leads to come in. It's getting referrals. It's creating a loyalty program that helps propel referral getting so to speak so you can notice they're not prospecting they're merely helping their clients brag and that's the kind of thing you need to start thinking about and getting a return on your energy okay so the bottom line here is very simple digital marketing in, in as a whole is all about delivering value social media venues are merely communications platforms they're there to share value with your current loyal customers they're not there for you to expect a whole barrage of new customers who've never heard of you just to find you through social media. If you can set your expectations to, hey, this is an opportunity for me to keep customers and generate loyalty and referrals, then you are on the right track. That's the right mindset for 
the social media aspect. Look, in the first part of this presentation, we talked about search engine optimization, and that's you know that's the part of hey, try driving in new business. And in the second part of this is social media, which is a separate part, which is about keeping business and generating referrals. So that's the value you can add, and there are even more opportunities for building loyalty because it's not just about acquiring customers and clients; it's about keeping them coming back for more and bringing their friends along, just like we discussed. So let's talk about just some basic things. More, more opportunities for loyalty. In addition to social media that we just discussed, mobile marketing, it is huge. When this is done right, the ROI and the ROE are immediately measured and constantly improved. This doesn't have to be some complicated text messaging thing. It can be. If you're, if you're in a business where you want customers to keep coming back, text message marketing is incredible. The numbers will blow you away. Uh, text messages that get read in a matter of minutes versus email that gets read in a matter of days. So that's instant. Uh, it, it could also be doing QR codes. A whole lot of things. The fact is there are so many opportunities to keep customers coming back for more. And that's where your low-hanging fruit lies. So there's so much to do here. And I want to make it really clear that you have an opportunity in finding the right expert. And we make that really easy for you in finding the right expert. Because when you know where to look, it's easy. All right, And I want to tell you right now that we want to show you the way. Okay, Our marketing packages make it so easy for you to grow your business, build loyalty, and drive revenue. Bottom line, we can help. So don't delay. This stuff is going to take your business to another level, and I would like you to contact us now to get started. Thank you so much.